Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam. I'm not Sufi, but I really enjoy listening to your videos. I like how you make things so easy to understand for us. Alhamdulillah. You must be Sufi as you're watching the videos. <laughs> <laughs> These are just titles. You have to be one whom loves the Divine and loves the prophetic reality. You know, we, we, we like uh, if I talk in English and somebody from Japan says, I don't know what you're saying, it's just lost in translation. The words and these titles don't mean anything. These are just, you know, people made titles but this is a, is a path of Divine love and the love for the Divine, love for the prophetic reality and we're just uh, servants of love, inshaAllah. Love never leaves you alone. Uh, Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi How does connecting with the shaykh affect guidance in our day-to-day -day life? Allah bless you eternally. How does connecting with the shaykh affect the guidance in your day-to-day -day life? You have to buy three of the timeless reality books, <laughs> one for yourself and two as a penalty for other people. <laughs> How do you connect with the shaykh? <laughs> the whole tariqah is all we teach is about the connection. Without the connection it's like, okay, if you go buy a mobile phone tomorrow, everybody loves to have the newest mobile phone. If you buy a mobile phone but don't get a, a cellular data plan, so then what would be the benefit of the phone? Nothing. You, you can go around and, and pose, poser, you, you show, oh look I have this phone. It has no cellular data, it's not connected to anything, so no, but I just have the phone. And that's how most people live their life. They think, okay, it's just me and I, I do my, my worshipness or I do whatever I want to do. And the whole of this teaching is that if you're not connected, you're actually other things are interfering with you. Don't think that the devil leaves you unconnected. But he'll be the one connecting to the servant. So the one whom has no shaykh, the devil is his shaykh. So the one who doesn't come for zikr, doesn't participate in zikr, you know, all these different things and who's the one guiding them? And that's why the, the, if you don't have one who represents you, shaitan is representing you. So that's, that's the purpose of connecting with the guide and, and making sure that my heart is connected so that now I have a cellular plan. That the fires is coming to me, the energy is coming to me, guidance is coming to me. Then I, every night I go and look back and see what I did wrong and I take an accounting. So it's all the time this reality book, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam What is the best adab when it comes to assist someone who lost a loved one? To assist someone who lost a loved one. Inshaallah whatever you can patiently do to sit with them and to, to make them to feel better and to, to pray for them and to teach them how they should be making salawats and having the love of Prophet so that the, the heart can find a sense of peace and ease inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, to cleanse from past habit of smoking marijuana for years, should we do the same as you mentioned with tobacco? And how is marijuana different from tobacco? Yeah, the many dangers that there are these, all these ridiculous articles that this is something natural, it's a herb and we can do it. Well, heroin is natural, Every, all these drugs come from the earth and grown. You, you can grow poppy seeds and you'll be heroin addict and say, well this is all natural. No, the, the uh, cocaine is natural. So no, none of these are, are natural for human beings, it's actually unnatural. And for a conscious state and, and the spiritual upliftment, there's no drug that can help somebody to spiritually uplift open the pineal glands to take all sorts of hallucinogenics. These are a society like a McDonald's society. That everybody wants to drive through spirituality that, give me something in two minutes that I can hallucinate and pretend like I'm in heaven. 
it doesn't work that way. So the tariqahs come and teach, no actually you have to fight, this is spiritual warfare and take a path in which now to fight every day to keep your sanity, keep your spirituality, keep your coordinates. And that is the, the great jihad that Prophet described to companions who were fighting at least two battles a day, fierce battles in a, in a you know 150 degree temperature in the, in the middle of Saudi Arabia and fasting in Ramadan. So it is… and then coming saying, no the, the spiritual battle is more difficult. So we don't have, even have an idea of the extent of its difficulty. So these are, these are the struggles that are so important. And uh, anything that you take into your mouth and, and burn into the lungs, one, you can't because any damage to the lungs takes away the breath of mercy. So there is no some inhalant and shaitan is fooling everybody when he made the hot inhalant and cold inhalant and everybody had all of a sudden all these crystals in their lungs and then COVID came and, and killed the rest of them because it weakened their capacity to breathe and their respiratory. The whole system of the lungs is the tree of life, Sidratun Muntaha. So anyone who wants to have the Isra and Miraj within themselves, then everything Allah gave within ourselves. If you want to meet your Lord you have to go to your heart and that will be the meeting with the one who governs your heart. But you have to traverse through your blood, through the lungs, through the breath, so all of that is essential. Then to take anything, they say, okay, well, I don't want to smoke it, then I'll chew on it and, and, and take, you know, mushrooms and, and all sorts of different drugs. But anything that loses your capacity to think, let's put it in a different way. If you, if you believe this is a spiritual battle and let's say it was physical battle where there's a, a thousand demons outside your door, one, would you go out without the right attire? And would you go out slightly hallucinating? So let me you know, take some of these drugs and let me go outside and fight these demons but well, they would rip your head off in, in about the first two seconds of opening the door. So it means then you don't really take your battle serious. So how could anyone be under constant attack, constant spiritual pressure that they do their all right or otherwise they have attacks, constantly connecting with the shaykhs to make sure fires is reaching them. How could you tip your psych psychological state off? How could you take anything that would take you not to be 100% sure of what you're doing and, and cognizant of what you're doing for your spiritual battle? That would be just something horrific. So people whom they do a lot of the spiritual practices they understand their mind has to be 100%, 100% of the time, just the slightest wound. They understood like in fighting, I gave this example before I saw a kickboxing match where the guy had a, a weak leg, a cut on his leg. His opponent the whole fight was kicking that leg, it's horrific, it's demonic. That he, he wanted to win, he saw the cut and he kept kicking that leg until the guy just he came out of the, out of the fight, no way could he fight. So do you think shaitan he sees where you have a weakness and he's not going to hit you there? So oh, look at this guy what he just did, he just uh, took these things or took these pills or took this medicine, took this the thing that knocks his, his brain off, and shaitan will immediately begin to attack the servant and, and overcome them and, and try to possess them. So it is very difficult. This spiritual battle is so real it requires the person to be 100% in their capacity and 100% sort of reaching towards this Divine power and this Divine grace to fight and to, to fight to keep their survival, their mentality for if you lose and fall they come after your mind and you lose your mind. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah When the heart is expanding and contraction and tears come, does this mean the… let us change here, sorry, it just moved here. Sorry, when the heart is expanding and contraction and tears come, does this mean the connection is established? When do we know when one has become more liquid? You would know. So alhamdulillah, these are the, the conditions that you know people know when they're solid and, and, and 
intolerant and the, the liquid state is a state in which they, they feel the fire, they feel the energy, they feel the difficulty, they feel adhering to the teachings is becoming difficult, they feel themselves burning and they feel everything around them is trying to agitate them and they're trying to remain patient, calm to good character and that they listen. So when they hear these realities and they begin to understand them and put them into practice. Means you'd be surprised at how many people hear it and actually do the opposite. So when the shaykh is saying comment and participate they hear it but they don't even do it and they, they say, oh no I thought I was supposed to remain silent but why, why would you be different than what he's talking about? So it means they hear it, they live by it, they put it into action so that not of, none of it to fall to the ground. You know, otherwise you're hearing a Muhammadan haqqaiq, you allowed it to come and just fall to the ground, you didn't act on it. And then the servant is responsible to Allah that, you heard all those things and you did nothing with it? So that, that becomes the, the issue. Once the servant is feeling it, living it, breathing it, eating it, participating in it, feel all of the, the barakah of it. They feel the heat of that, that life and they know when they're starting to melt. You feel like you're melting that everything just so difficult, so hard to just sort of keep up and, and to, to keep struggling and you feel that you're melting and you feel like when people are arguing or trying to argue with you, you don't even have an energy to argue with them, it's like, for what? And that's when you just start to understand that you're liquid, you become patient and tolerant. And then Allah will directly you know push you and poke you and prod you to see what type of character you have. But anger, no. The people who are sort of consistently angry and intolerant that they're not reaching liquid state because they're, they're very solid and that's what's making the anger to come. It's because it doesn't want to melt and doesn't want to conform and doesn't want to sort of just be patient with everything. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How much minimum salawat should we recite daily? Minimum is from the awrad which has the, the 300, 500, 1500, those, those you, you do you know on day one but they should be immediately increased because that doesn't take time. So you have your tasbih, Allahumma salli wa sallim Muhammad, Allahumma salli wa Muhammad, Allahumma salli wa sallim Muhammad, Allahumma salli wa Muhammad. It becomes a second nature that as much as you can make of your salawats then you begin to feel the energy and the power of those salawats and the protection of them. So as many as you can do and never to, to do a minimum that try to always go far beyond your, your ability and to do as many as you possibly can and, and challenge yourself and push yourself to be always doing better. It means our life is about doing better than ourselves. Everybody in pursuit of dunya never likes to go down. But why when they go towards Allah they, they enjoy going downward, right? You get a job. In six months you get so offended if you don't get a raise and then another six months you're expecting another raise and another six months you're expecting another raise. Then you want to improve your car, then you want to improve your home. So you're always trying to go up in dunya and people whom struggle in the way of Allah they struggle then for some reason they think they achieve something and then as a result they go down. They give less, they do less, they participate less, they do less practices. And they're going downward as if they're moving through a different door to a different location that goes down. And that's not, that's not the correct understanding. What I try to do for my dunya, I should have far, far more I should have done for akhirah. That I'm always trying to do more, always trying to overdo myself, always trying to, to, to get more attention from Prophet not okay well we, do we achieve this let's you know cancel our milad and well we fed 10 people we don't need to feed another 10 people. No you're always trying to increase it. 
as if it's like your dunya because you love akhirah more than you would love your dunya. So you're constantly trying to feed more people, to do more projects, to push everybody to give more things out, to do more things out. Everything is always trying to get more attention from Prophet But people treat that way for dunya that they're expecting a raise every six months. But for their akhirah they actually start to cut what they were giving every six months. One six months they give this, next six months they give less, then next six months they give less and <laughs> they're working downwards. That's when we know that something's wrong in our understanding and in our system. Anyone who's out there hoping for raises and you're not giving a raise to Allah well then don't expect a raise and even you may expect a cut in what has been given to you. Then Allah got your attention. So when we live our life like that uh, then we're just sort of in a spiral down world. Everything has to be pushing up, pushing up and pushing ourselves to excel and to achieve even more. Especially in the sight of all these difficulties that are coming and, and all the challenges that are coming in life. Otherwise you see people start to fall out left and right, right? Because you, you went down, down, down so much until you cut yourself out too and say, I don't need to go, I'm such a clever person, I don't need to, to log on and do zikr tonight. So that, that wasn't right, that, that, that system didn't work at all. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Is it possible to go subatomic? Are you a ship? <laughs> is, is Zeeshan feeding you bizarre questions? <laughs> was that from you like handing him a note and said, this uh, throw shake off, I was with uh, subatomic, he's a nuclear submarine from Russia. <laughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi <laughs> What causes random feelings of heavy depression where it's hard to do anything but lay in bed? How to overcome? Yeah, inshaAllah the, the depression, alhamdulillah wa shukran you know, this, this is, that's a part of the talk now. That if you're not pushing yourself to do more, yeah, everyone should just sit and meditate of what we just described. That people are so offended. Uh, because I, I'm hearing it every day from the kids, they get work or somebody else uh, wants to get work, they're so offended if in six months in the review they didn't get a raise. And for everything in dunya they're continually going, 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 going. When it comes to akhirah they're continuously trying to cut, cut corners, cut participation, cut activities, cut, cut any type of khidmat. Now of course you're going to become depressed. This life becomes so heavy and that fires and the barakah is no longer coming. When you support and when you give you have now the attention of Prophet And those whom have faith they understood that those acts are the secret of barakah that comes towards our life. When we do those acts immense barakahs come. You know that's when Allah says, oh this servant nothing is wasted in my way, I will give him a raise. Because everything is coming from Allah nothing is lost in Allah's way. I will make things come to that person that they never imagined, opportunities, doors that open, somebody comes with some sort of an opportunity for somebody, means their faith is so strong that everything they do in Allah's way they begin to see everything flourishing. And that's what's important, they do their salawats, they do their practices you know, for depression, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, make the salawats, make the muraqabah, make all these connections. Without them what happens? You begin to feel negative energies, then you don't make your salawats, you begin to feel more negative energies, then you don't participate, you don't do what you used to do, you start to do less than you did last year, oh then you become heavier. Then you look back and say, you did less than the year before that become heavier. So everything then becomes heavier until the person is loaded from very, very negative energies of dunya and they just, they can't move. That's one or if they had expectations and the expectations didn't come the way they wanted them and that becomes a danger and that's why the teaching is also for sabr. 
for those whom wish to have sabr is don't ask for sabr, don't ask that Allah test you in horrific ways but just expect nothing in life and teach yourself, I expect nothing. Ya Rabbi ya, take my expectations out of my heart. I don't expect a raise, I don't expect my, my children to listen to me, I don't expect anything. And when you don't expect anything and you can continuously practice which is very difficult, then you'd be happy with everything because you weren't expecting you know, them to do good and you, they do good you'd say, alhamdulillah. You weren't expecting something to come to you and it came to you so alhamdulillah. And then we become, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, Ya Rabbi thank you, thank you, alhamdulillah. But when people are not saying shukran lillah because, well why, why should I shukr Allah that He didn't give me what I wanted, mm, that's not nice. So that's why when we take all expectations away we're happy with everything that Allah gives and we try to keep that for ourselves and as a reminder always for ourselves is that we try to keep that path of alhamdulillah wa shukran and alhamdulillah wa shukran ya rabbi shukr shukr. So alhamdulillah that should take away sadness and difficulty and depression and that Allah thank me and I give you more. So alhamdulillah wa shukran and that Allah give us more whether it's spirituality, whether it's enlightenment, whether it's a, a happiness and contentment, whether it's rizq and whatever it is that people are wanting more of that alhamdulillah shukran, thank me and I give you more inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Does the cross have any meaning in our understanding of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam? What about a diamond ring? Hmm? How, how did we get to there? So people watching online they're like, wait, 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 we just went from <laughs> the salah and the importance of maqam al to to the cross and a diamond ring? What was that, the diamond ring? No idea. The cross. <laughs> Save that for Christmas time inshaAllah. <laughs> but the cross is, is not a symbol of the heavens. So that, that, that's an insult to Sayyidina Isa and the Sayyidina Isa salam was raised to heavens, nothing, nothing, nothing ever touched him. The surah and the face of the, the betrayer took the image of Sayyidina Isa salam and they tortured him because he sold his Prophet for a bag of coins, Judas. So that, that never touched Sayyidina Isa salam. And in the horizontal line, and the vertical line is based on spirituality, means the, the horizon, the horizontal line is at the feet of the Prophets and the vertical is the energy of your spine. So that line is under their feet, so the, the cross in spirituality would be at their feet. What they say upside down, oh this is a sign of the devil, no that's actually the sign of reality. <laughs> so they show in scary movies that they take the cross and it goes upside down and say, this is the sign of the devil. No actually that's the sign of the reality, the other one is a sign of the devil. So when it's up like this, this is a sign of demonic energy. When it flips like this means that this line shouldn't be at the heart of the Prophets, it's at the feet of the Prophets. So that dunya never comes up to conquer their heart. So to be crucified by dunya, no that's not a station of the Prophet it's at the feet. Everybody else in creation that's for them that the, the dunya has crucified them and throw them up on a stick and that's why you see them with tattoos and markings and horrific understandings. But the way of Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhada, he was Salihin, dunya is at their feet and that it never rises above their feet. And Sayyidina Isa salam is not how they understand. He doesn't like shining lights and he doesn't like a ham sandwich, he doesn't like any of this, he's very tough. His spirituality was extremely tough and he was very intolerant and as a result he had 12 companions. 
not like Prophet with 124,000. So it means his spirituality was very tough and very rigid, not like what they're talking about and, and uh, this was everything was about uh, softness with people. There was no softness, it was very intolerant, very tough, very strong and very fierce. And then his arrival back onto this earth should even be more fierce and intolerant, very strong, very strong in character inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.